Danielle here from BCO SciComm team and today we have our very own Kian who's gonna talk to us about Jupiter and what do you like so much about Jupiter Kian? I think my favorite thing about looking up at Jupiter is because it's so bright it really just draws everyone in whether you're an experienced astronomer you're saying you know what this is or I've been walking down the street with my friends and before I've even pointed it out they've said look at that big bright star over there and then I really? say oh it's not actually a star at all but then if you have a kind of a medium pair of binoculars I say yeah. to them or like a small beginner's telescope you point it up at Jupiter it's really easy to find you can see it's not so much looking like a star at all yeah because you can see not only the disk of Jupiter but you can see depending on what time of night you can see four of its 79 moons yeah you don't need to have a really big telescope or anything to be able to see those four moons which is really cool because you can have even a pair of binoculars and see it on your own even without a telescope or binoculars you can see it with the naked eye so it is a naked eye planet which is really easy to spot in the sky like you're saying just even going down the street you don't have to be in a really dark sky area to see the planet at all so it's a really good place to start especially if you're starting out in astronomy yeah I mean if you point if you are lucky enough to have your own telescope or even a pair of binoculars mm -hmm. but it doesn't you don't need any big telescopes like the one we have up on top of the roof yeah. if you want to be able to see it it's really big we call it the king of the planets for a reason yeah because it's so bright in terms of just how big it is we say that we can fit about 1,000 earths inside of it right. now that's pretty difficult to get your head around yeah so what is. I like to focus in on again another thing that you can see if you have a medium-sized telescope mm -hmm. You can see what's called the great red spot right. of Jupiter. Now, that is my favorite thing of Jupiter to look at besides mm. its moons, because it's this huge storm system that's about four times the size of the Earth, and it's a couple yeah. of hundred years old as well. So yeah. if you ever complain about the weather in Ireland again, <laughs> yeah. Danielle. Yeah, imagine a storm four Earths across, <laughs> blowing away. A few away. hundred years yeah. old, and it's gonna be there for a long time right. to come as well. Yeah. So it's really cool. And it's one of my favorite things to see. And Jupiter is a really big planet, so the gravity is really strong on Jupiter. So because it's so strong, it's able to hold a lot of things in orbit around it. One of those things being its largest moon. Ganymede. Yeah. Ganymede, which is my favorite moon. I have a lot of favorites for Jupiter, okay? But Ganymede by itself, if it wasn't going around Jupiter, mm -hmm. like we'll demonstrate in a second, if it wasn't going around Jupiter yeah. and was going around the sun, it would actually be classified as a planet because it's, it's actually crazy. bigger than planet Mercury. Yeah, can you imagine a moon that size? It's crazy, It's right? amazing to think about. And so we're talking about the gravity of Jupiter and we're gonna do a little demonstration to show you just a little bit, give you a visual idea of how it's able to hold so many things in orbit around it. Right, Cool, Ian? looking forward to it. What we can do with this is actually see exactly in a smaller scale how the moons of Jupiter actually go around the planet today, okay? And how they came into the positions that they're in today as well, okay? So this big heavy metal ball, this is planet Jupiter. So we're gonna put this in the middle. And then if this was real life, I would have 79 marbles going around Jupiter. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put them in and you'll just see, this is a pretty good representation of how the moons go around the planets. Now the further away these marbles are, the slower they actually go, okay? But then the closer they get to Jupiter, the faster they go, okay? It's all simple orbital mechanics. Some moons of Jupiter are really close to it at the moment, some are further away, some even go in the opposite direction because like we said, there are 79 moons, so sometimes over the last four billion years that Jupiter has been around and all different number of planets in the solar systems have changed. The moons actually can crash into each other. They can, their orbits are crossing over so they're always pushing each other in different directions and that's what causes some of the moons to travel in the opposite direction. Another nickname that people have for Jupiter, as I said, I call Jupiter the king of the planets just because it's so big. But I've heard some people call it the vacuum cleaner of the solar system. And the reason that people call it the vacuum cleaner of the solar system is because since it's so large, it does a really good job of kind of sucking in any small rocks that we have here, whether it's the size of a small pebble or the size of a city, in towards it and basically getting it out of the way. We actually observed a comet called Shoemaker-Levy a few years ago coming very close, so close in fact, 
that it actually smacked into Jupiter okay but what would happen if Jupiter was not there that comet would have no barrier to the inner solar system and that would mean there was a high potential for comets like that in the past right now and into the future coming very close to the earth and we don't have that protection anymore if Jupiter was not there okay so here's big bright Jupiter in the middle and you have all these rocks coming in and what it actually does is it sweeps them up and that kind of it just pulls it towards it so it kind of acts as a defense system for the planets in the inner solar system now every now and again some objects do get closer to the Sun just because the Sun is pulling on it as opposed to Jupiter pulling on it but because Jupiter being the biggest planet in the solar system has a really strong gravitational pull itself it does a really good job of sucking up any dangerous objects like asteroids comets or other space objects out there from coming in and potentially impacting the Earth Thank you so much, Kian, for that great demonstration. And if you have any questions about Jupiter, how to find it in the sky, or just general questions, drop them in the comment section down below, or stop by and see us here, maybe even Kian, at Black Rock Castle Observatory.